Hey everybody, welcome back to another Nature's Always Right episode. Today we're going to talk more in depth about solarizing garden beds that are infested with really bad weeds. And I want to show you the process from the beginning all the way to the end when I've snuffed out all the weeds and then I'm re-preparing the beds. So you can see that entire process and how well it actually works. Because I've got some incredibly bad weeds in these beds. I have, I think this is called sparge. It's kind of a crawling weed. It's a nice ground cover actually, but it drops a ton of seed. Um, and then I've got the one of the worst weeds in San Diego. This grass, which is Bermuda grass. Um, it spreads through rhizome, which is its roots. So any roots left behind can actually produce a new grass plant and then it spreads out. It also drops seed, as you can see there. So it's a nightmare, it spreads like crazy. It's the grass that's poking up all throughout this area. So rhizomous weeds are, are some of the worst, for sure. And then I've got you know my some of my garden plants, basil and squash, comfrey, yarrow. If I can snuff these weeds out and get them to go away and re-prepare these beds, then you could probably do the solarizing on any of your horrible weeds as well. Solarizing is just the process of laying out a black tarp over an area and typically what small farmers are using are these five millimeter black silage tarps made from polyethylene farmers friend is a company that's a great farm supply company and they actually sell these tarps and they have you know the best quality yeah you cannot use a regular tarp like those woven poly tarps those fall apart in the sun the silage tarps can just take a beating from sun year after year and they're very thick plastic they don't really break down you want to do this in the summertime it's going to have the most powerful effect and it's going to take the shortest amount of time in the in the hot summer 90 degree fahrenheit or above you can leave the tarp on for about three to four weeks and that is just going to roast everything under there and it's even gonna roast the seed bank in that top layer of soil as well. So it's got multiple benefits. It also will keep moisture in the soil and so that the soil microbes stay alive in there as opposed to being beaten down constantly by the sun. Nature's rule is always to cover bare earth. Uh, so that's another purpose for tarps as well. All right, so what I'm gonna do here, I'm actually making another episode today about making nutrient cheese, so be sure to check that out here. So first what we're gonna do is collect all this comfrey and yarrow. We're gonna collect the basil, making a bunch of pesto from it, and then come through here once we're done collecting and just weed whack this down to a very low level. Uh, that way the tarp will sit more onto the ground and the heat can kind of penetrate down into the ground more because I want some of the action of killing the weed seeds in that top layer of weed bank. So getting it lower to the ground will help me if I just cover the tarp with this. So yeah, it'll kill these plants, but it won't get lower. All right, so now that it's all cleared, now it's ready to put the black tarp on. And what's happened now, now that I've cut down all that Bermuda grass, the plant's gonna send a response to say, hey, you know, we just lost all of our photosynthesis. We gotta put out more growth, more growth. So all the stored energy in the roots is now gonna pump it out to produce more plant. Once I tarp this and cover it, the plant's gonna come out of the ground searching for more light. And when we uncover this in about three weeks, we're gonna see that the plant has tried to sprawl out. And what we're trying to do is make it expend all of its energy that's stored in the root system. So most likely what I'll have to do is tarp it for three weeks, take it off, I'll rip out the roots out of the ground again, tarp it again, any leftover stored energy will be set up again uh, for the final three weeks. That's how it's gonna work and that's why solarizing is so effective. Hey guys, so this is about one week later after putting the tarp on there and you can see what it's, it's kind of hard to see where the beds are but if you see where my irrigation lines are so right out in front of here and what you're seeing a lot of is the Bermuda grass trying to shoot up out of the ground and continue to grow so we're trying to expend all the energy of the Bermuda grass root system so this is looking real good guys if you can tell that there's no other plants already it's just the Bermuda. So after three weeks, this is what it now looks like after taking the tarp off. And a lot of the Bermuda is dead, but a lot of root structure is still under the ground and that has stored energy in it. We're gonna need to rake all this out. 
I'm gonna actually hula ho the whole thing. Then I'm gonna bring in some water, water this area again, cover it with a tarp, and let all the energy from the roots be expended. They're gonna try to shoot up more grass, and hopefully that'll be the last amount of energy they have. Tarp it for another two, three weeks, take the tarp off, and see where it's at and hopefully just have to get out grass one more time. And so behind me here, I've got a propane tank hooked up to a torch, and I'm gonna be using this torch to burn holes into this landscaping fabric. And this is a really common technique amongst market gardeners to keep weeds under control. So what they'll do is they'll grow uh, heads of lettuce, kale, chard, tomatoes, cucumbers, anything long growing or things like greens that you really, really don't want the weeds to be there really saves you a lot of time on weeding. I've wanted to avoid using plastic and I have, I've been able to control my weeds very, uh, pretty easily with just no-till typical techniques. But in this bed, uh, it's become unmanageable because of Bermuda grass. I used a tarp for about over 30 days and it still did not completely kill the grass. So now it's pretty darn weak. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here and cover it all in landscape fabric, burn holes in with my torch, and then plant chard and kale right here. So that's what's gonna go in be long-term beds and I won't have to weed them. Uh, it's gonna be really excellent. I'm excited to see how it will turn out. So first to get started, how am I gonna burn those holes? When referencing Curtis Stone's videos on how he made his landscape fabrics, ultimately what looks to be the best way is to make a little mold for yourself out of wood. So that's what I'm gonna do here. And I'll be cutting some holes into that so I can make marks. Unfortunately, I don't have a three inch size hole saw and I don't feel like spending 30 or 40 bucks to buy one. I'm not gonna be making a large amount of landscape fabrics. So I'm gonna make them how Curtis did originally, which is to um, make a pattern and then just put marks onto the tarp where, the, where you're gonna burn the holes and allow the burner to, to burn in that hole. But the way he does it now, the better way uh, the way I would do if I had a, four, a three inch hole saw is to make the three inch holes in the wood. Then you, the burner just fits right in the hole, burns it, and then you move the mold as you go. So it's real easy. So what I'm gonna be doing is an extra step. I recommend making the mold with three inch hole saws so it fits the three inch diameter of the torches that are commonly used. Now this torch uh, I just got off Amazon. It's I think it was around 50 bucks. I'll put a link in the description for it. Um, there's a couple different brands that are really excellent quality and have great reviews. So I'll show you guys those ones. There are some uh, farming companies that will sell you a backpack setup. They'll sell you their own version of this. Here's the more cheap version, but it works just as well. Is go get yourself a propane tank from anywhere. They're very cheap to fill up once you own them. And then I just used a ratchet strap put it to a dolly, and then I attached my $50 torch, so we're talking under 100 bucks. You can have your own movable flamer. And people have some other videos online of how they just use an old backpacking rig, like a backpacking backpack, and they'll attach the propane tank to that. Those are some other options. Or if you wanna spend over $200, then you can just buy it directly from a company. It's fully set up, perfect, and all of that. And they'll flame the bed, uh, a couple days after direct seeding and wetting the beds, because the weed seams will usually germinate first, you heat up the first uh, quarter inch of that soil, kill out the germinating weed seeds. So they have some that will actually just roll across the whole 30 inch bed, which is really convenient. So yeah, I'm gonna start playing around with flame weeding and seeing how I like it and stuff as well. Do you guys on a smaller scale so you can see what I'm about to do so it's a little easier for you to figure out? You know, I didn't know anything about construction or building things. Uh, for a long time until I built a lot of things myself and just learned. Um, so I just want to try to help you if you've never had to figure something like this out. So the first thing, um, let's just imagine this. This is our uh, 30 inch board here. Okay, and this is the edges of the bed or the board because it's going to line up perfectly. So we have a 30 inch board and we want our kale to be three rows. So kale and chard, it's three rows on 10 inch centers. So to show you what that means, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come off five inches here, come on five inches here, and that's where our first kale is gonna be. We put the first one there, the other one will be there. So we said 10 inch centers, right? So that means, so if we add 10 inches to this, we will have 15. Uh, 10 inches to this, it'd be 25, five more inches to 30. 
Okay, so that's the whole board. So this gives us three rows that are equidistant from each other every 10 inches. Okay, that gives us a distance of 10 inches between the rows. The other thing that we'll do is to do them offset. So if you put them in the center here, so then something else that I'm going to do, which I didn't draw this very well, it's not going to actually be in the center here. If your beds were a little bit wider than 30 inches, then you could put another fourth row here, but that would be exactly on the edge of the 30 inches. Now those beds over there are a little bit bigger than 30 inches. So maybe I should go for it. Maybe I should try to fit in, do like a three, four, three, four. It's still 10 inch centers. And it would just be going to the edge of the bed. So I think that's what I'm gonna do because of these special beds over there. So normally on a 30 inch bed, you would just create three rows and you would stack them more on top of each other. But you could, you could slightly offset them like this. The shape that this is creating, you might have noticed, is like a diamond pattern. And that in nature is the most efficient packing efficiency. So all these plants are gonna have the best light and air possible. Okay, so I'm gonna make my starting line here. I wanna be at least three inches off of this first edge here. If I ever drill out large holes in the future, I'll be able to. These are 10 inches away from each other now, and they're five inches off of the edge. So the next thing I wanna do is come 10 inches up. I'm making one of my favorite symbols right now. Some of you video game fans will know it. Yeah, we're all about 10 inches, or very close. So I'll be drilling right on the edge there. This board is barely big enough, it just worked out. I ripped it off of that cabinet over there. So I'm just working with what I got here. This mark here is gonna match this one up here. There was no reason for me to draw any of those lines. But oh, that's just pretty cool. It's a Triforce from Legend of Zelda. I find how your childhood stuff somehow aligns with your adult activities. Just need to make a couple more marks and I'm done. So now what I need to do is just, you know, drill them. Okay, now I have my hole pattern so that when I move it across the tarp, I'll just poke and mark where my holes will be. Now for the board, it's really easy to tell where to put it and it's 30 inches across. And then um, I don't have anything that can like make a mark really. So I, what I did is just I've used a screwdriver to stab through the hole and it's making a mark that I can see well enough. So I'm just gonna go with that. Okay, now that I burned the holes in, we just need to come back and clean up any holes that I didn't completely burn off. It's pretty easy though, most of these just rip off. It was just like one little piece. I clean these up, then go through these beds one more time and hit any Bermuda grass that's back alive. So as you can see, there is still some more Bermuda grass that is popping through here. So I'm gonna come through and use my blowtorch now that I have it and see how it works. And we're just gonna blowtorch across the entire ground, kill any weed seeds that are in the top quarter inch, and then hopefully melt this Bermuda and make it have a harder time coming back. And then we'll put layers of compost out and then cover it with the landscape fabric. <laughs> So fun, man. <laughs> like, everybody needs one of these. So, for the soil fertility, we added two wheelbarrows of compost each, and then in those wheelbarrows, mixed in about a quarter cup of azomite and maybe like a whole cup of 211 fertilizer. And that's just gonna give the beds everything that they need to be really healthy for the kale and chard that's gonna go in here.
So in planting in the landscape fabric, I definitely wouldn't want a hole any smaller than three inches in diameter, which is the diameter of the torch. Basically, I've, I've been running the water in the beds, getting it a little bit wet, and uh, I'm using my homie. This is a Korean planting tool. Make a little hole, pushing the soil block down. I uh, also want to make sure that your soil blocks or your plugs, whatever you're planting, are wet because when you go to compact them, it'll help the, the root ball really stay together. If it's dry, it kind of falls apart and can kind of damage the plant. So here's what the beds look like at the end of October. And I'm pretty happy with the results. You know, there's a couple spots where you can see the Bermuda grass trying to come up again. But in general, it's not bad at all. And I can just pull up any weeds that there are. So I'm really happy with the results. And I really like the landscape fabric. It's pretty cool. It will make things a lot easier to handle going into the future with this area of the garden. I hope that helps you guys see a couple more techniques of how you can deal with really vigorous weeds such as Bermuda. So you've got about three different techniques. You can solarize with the polyethylene tarp. You can use a flame weeder. Then you can come in with the landscape fabric and prevent anything from coming back. And those are some really good ways to get rid of these weeds in an organic way that doesn't use poison or anything like that.